Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee. Today we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content. As you can see, the team today is based all around that meta-breaking Pokemon, Nihiligo. So the rock and poison type with a very good speed stat as well. Uh, can do a lot of work in this format. Got to be very careful with it though because it is a little bit fragile on the physical side of things. But um, can perform very well in this format. Support cast, we've got a very solid fire water grass core in cartana tapafini and incineral and we've seen that kind of take speed and, and be used from the sun and moon days and it's kind of transitioned to sword and shield as well it does help us slow things down a little bit if we need a bit of time to kind of create a board position and uh, build that momentum up again uh, and we've got taunt on incineral which does help us out a little bit and mitigate against a trick room which can be a problematic uh, component for us to go up against especially with this kind of very fast paced team and then you've got the kind of the nut core in there as well with the uh, the Thunderous and the Urshifu with the Nihiligo, which uh, which performs very well. So kind of a throwback to Series 7 a little bit with this team, but I think it's a nice one for us to feature because I think Nihiligo is definitely something that a lot more players are looking at at the minute and it's probably picking up a bit more popularity as we're going deeper into the format. So we'll have a couple of games with the team as we always do. We'll pilot it, hopefully showcase some wins with the team, see how it functions. There is a poker pace down below in the description if you want to check out the details. Try it out on Sh Showdown and then we'll throw the rental up at the end of the episode so hopefully you enjoyed today's episode friends if you've tried Nia Lego out this season so far and you've been enjoying it do let me know down in the comment section below I'd love to hear your thoughts on this Pokemon in particular and uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode so without further ado friends let's jump into our first match of today okay first up today we got Mario playing a team of Dragapult, Incineroar, Urshifu, Rillaboom, Togekiss and Colossal so it's going to be that infamous colossal kind of build at the minute obviously with the togekiss in there providing that redirection support but we know the rest of the team you're going to have the colossal be the main kind of setup of the pokemon got dragapult 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 with surf there and obviously the urshifu going to be the rapid strike variant with uh, access to aqua jet and then the, the support and cast around it just to help it function going to be difficult for us to uh to play against for sure because it <coughs> We don't really have a way to uh, to knock it out uh, in one kind of hit, and we've got to be very careful around something like the Rillaboom. Uh, it can come out next to the Colossal and, and cause us all sorts of issues. Uh, okay. Could go Tapu Fini, Urshifu, I think. Incineroar in the back for sure, and I think Nine Ligo is not bad here, uh, in all honesty. Like Nihiligo Cotton is not bad either. Um, I'd say Nihiligo is probably better for an endgame. If we can deal with the Colossal. Obviously the Colossal becomes a bit more of an issue. But then again, if we can kind of play through the Colossal turns and its residual damage is stopped, it's not maxed anymore. Ooh, if it hasn't got like Earth Power or something, then Nihiligo might have a chance. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know though. It's going to be difficult. Let's see. Colossal Dragapult is the lead from my opponent. All right. Well, I mean, we've got the option here where we could potentially pull the trigger with, with Tapu Fini and just go Max Geyser, Sucker Punch into the Dragapult. Uh, it's just whether or not we see something like the Rillaboom come in on that Colossal, which you would think would potentially happen. Uh... Because we could potentially use this turn to calm mind, but then it's like, are we just wasting a turn? Do they switch out, or do they just pull the trigger and 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 maybe go for something like? No, they can't. They can't attack. Um. Well, I'm kind of tempted because I don't want to get stung for not doing it, and we can adapt afterwards if they if they if they don't, you know. So we'll go for it. We'll go for it. the sucker punch. We'll go for the sucker punch. We'll go for the max geyser. And see what return we get. Oh, I knew it. 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 Okay, it's fine. It's still all right. It's not the worst case scenario. They're going to burn Urshifu, I think. We'll go for a phantom force. Max geyser are going to do a decent amount of damage anyway to the Rillaboom. And probably put it in range for a wicked blow if we're not burnt. So we we have that potential going into the next turn. Um, 
And the rain being up definitely helps us out against Colossal. Sucker Punch is definitely going to fail though, isn't it? Maybe it would have been better just doubling up into the, um, yeah, Will-O-Wisp. Light screen, okay. Oof, takes it pretty well. Buying that light screen, probably Assault Vest as well. Like, we've just walked right into that, haven't we? We just walked right into it. Uh, all right, well, we can max it off or we're gonna get eaten alive by this Rillaboom though, aren't we? Um, do we just, do we just forego? I think we have to just keep, we can't lose resources just on the, the whim of losing resources, you know? I think we could just protect Urshifu here. Switch out Tapu Fini, keep it for later on in this match, because we can't just freely just like allow Rillaboom to get like a wood hammer or a grassy glide onto us. It's just not worth it. And we're getting punished here from pulling the trigger too early with, with Tapu Fini, but that's the thing. Like, this is what the these colossal teams will do to us. But, you know, we're at a disadvantage, of course. Our momentum's kind of been cut short. It was always going to be a possibility, though, but you don't, don't feel like, we, well, we've lost the game now because of that, you know? There's always going to be chances to kind of come back into games. It's just about how you manage things. There's a wood hammer coming out. Uh, Incineroar taking that like a champ, of course. Um, and now I think what we'll do is we'll switch back into Finny from Incineroar. We have to worry about now. Um, hmm. Do we parting shot? Because what's the Dragapult got? It's moveset, right? It's got light screen. Ally switch surf and probably dragon darts or break and swipe. So you don't see it having. I'm going to potting shot out into the Rillaboom because I feel like the Rillaboom could potentially switch here and we could see the Colossal come in on that slot. Might be worth just doubling up into the into the Rillaboom, you know. Just catching the, the Urshifu potentially on, on the switch in. Okay, we're going to see an ally switch again. Fair enough. Another wood hammer coming out, I reckon. But this time into Urshifu. And we do catch the Dragapult, though. So uh, that's what you get for uh, ally switching. My opponent has lost a wave, potentially, if they don't have their own Urshifu in the back, which I'm assuming they will. Um, ooh, that does a nasty, nasty amount of damage, doesn't it? But we do get the parting shot, which is always nice. And we'll be able to get Tapu Fini onto the field now, which makes it a bit more difficult. You know, you haven't got access to Grassy Glide anymore. Um, and you probably are low enough health at this point in time for Extra Food to pick up the knockout on Rillaboom with the the, uh, the Wicked Blow. And we could kind of double into that slot, especially if the Colossal comes onto the field. We double into that slot um, with a Moonblast and expect... The Urshifu to come in as the Colossal protects. But we'll see what my opponent's got. <clears throat> Urshifu coming in. Alright, well. I've got to worry about Aqua Jet now. Which makes it a little bit more tricky. But I still think... Hmm. We could Sucker Punch the Rillaboom. But do they just switch out to Colossal? It's kind of dangerous. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. I don't expect the Rillaboom to outspeed our, uh, our Tapu Fini. So I think we... Oh, Moonblasting is probably not the best idea here. I think what we'll do is switch to Incineroar. And we will go for... Go for a Sucker Punch. I'd be down to a speed tie as well, of course, if they Aqua Jet, you know? But there's no point in protecting because of their ability, you know? They're going to be able to break through... Hours. It's just about getting a bit more damage onto the to the Rillaboom while we can. Preserve the Tapu Fini until the Rillaboom's gone, and then things get a bit easier for us to deal with. Aqua Jet coming out. They win the speed tie, unfortunately. Not ideal. Happens. And there's a Wood Hammer again into the Incineroar. But this time, we're in a bit of a better spot because we can potentially bring in the Ligor. Uh, yeah, minus, uh, yeah, they're minus two, 
I don't think a wood hammer. I'll get an Iligo. And we can definitely Meteor Beam. Not going to be very effective. But. Oh, actually, yeah. Or do we just allow the Ocean Food to kind of... I think what we'll do is fake out here. We'll get the Meteor Beam. Could we play into this? I don't know how we're going to be able to, to close this one out. If we can get rid of the Rillaboom, Tapu Fini's life gets it way easier. So, perfect. Perfect. Okay, there we go. This is what we want, actually, because now we can do some decent damage to this Colossal. The, the Aqua Jet's not going to happen this turn. Yeah, okay. That's good. That's good. So, get this Meteor Beam going. Still doesn't make it like we're going to be able to win at all, you know? <laughs> um, it's neutral damage. It'll be interesting to see how much this does. It's enough. Come on, Nihiligo. There we go. That is the switch that we wanted to see. Okay, so now, you know, we've got to remember my opponent still has the ability to uh, to max. So, um, it's not going to be, like, straightforward at all. But I think having Tapu Fini in the back... Helps us definitely control the terrain so the Rillaboom doesn't get like super carried away. Um, obviously, the Urshifu is the big problem for us right now. And the Rillaboom as well, you know, to a certain extent. Like Tapu Fini will beat Urshifu. So it's probably better that we go after the Rillaboom here, you know. It's just the fake out pressure that we've got from Rillaboom this turn, which is a little bit awkward. So I think what we'll do is we'll switch into Fini. Ah, we can't, we can't, we literally cannot protect Nihiligo here. So fake out in close combat is going to be a downfall if they don't max. Um, hmm. Are we better? Getting rid of the grassy terrain then. Let's have a quick look. Are they minus one? They're minus one. Okay. Let's make, let's make, let's make a decision because we're not running out of time. Let's go into Tapu Fini. And let's go for a sludge bomb into Rillaboom. I think they're going to max here, though, because I think that their uh, their options are quite small, unless they go fake out close combat here, which they may do. They may do. Uh, we just need to get rid of the Rillaboom, and then Tapu Fini just wins this for us. Are they maxing? No, they're not maxing, and they're not attacking. Well, they might be going Glassy Glide, but it's not going to be enough. We are going to be able to win this one. Fine, so that's all right. Close combat will come in. Yeah, Nihiligo going to get another beast boost. Nihiligo is stealing the show here for us. Ooh, this will take us down, I'd imagine. These crits. Bish, bash, bosh. Yeah, but I mean, it's fine now, isn't it? The Yoshifu can still max. I don't think it's really going to be able to deal with Tapu Fini. You just haven't got the attacks to do it. Um, yeah. And after, like, that really bad start, you know, where we, we, had, to pull, we had to pull back on our max Fini. Uh, to kind of gain some sort of semblance of being able to take the match. And I think uh, it's, it's it's a good example. You know, you don't... Like, you can make mistakes in games. It's just how you re kind of are recovering them. And we have been fortunate where we've been able to to kind of be able to recover them in, in this one. <sighs> They're going to max, right? Is it worth... It's not worth going for the fake out here, I don't think. I think we just parting shot... No, they're just Surge and Strike. We could have just faked her. But I mean, a Moonblast is going to be enough to get to get the win. They're not going for the uh, big old Max. We'll get our Berry. But I don't think that's going to be enough to save us against the uh, the old Urshifu here. Unfortunately, as another one will come out. But it'll be this, yeah, this final one. It's going to be be enough. But like I say, if any going to be in a position now where I can just go for that Moonblast. Show why it's such a good Pokemon against this archetype. Because, you know, like most of the time against the, the Colossal teams, once you remove the Rillaboom from that, like, from the archetype, from the core, it's like Finny has the easiest time. So it's all about preserving the Finny in these sort of games um, and allowing allowing Finny to kind of just clean up like it needs to. So very good game to Mario. Like I say, we get fortunate uh, with being able to kind of be in a position to pull that one back against a very scary archetype but a nice one for us to kick off with today as always and we'll jump into our second game of today's episode okay sasser up next playing a celesteela anti garchomp rotom wash grimmsnarl and comfy team interesting build for sure i love some of the picks here you've got the garchomp very good at the moment and uh, normally life orb with with uh soul stance 
and you've got the Entai as well. Cannot be intimidated, so it's a big threat, but doesn't like to face down against Nihiligo. Um Screen support as well, and then you've got Trick Room support with the Comfy. I don't see any sort of weakness policy like proc. The big thing from, for us here, I think, is that the Celesteela can can really threaten Nihiligo if we do bring it. I am going to bring Nihiligo, I think, up top. Um, and Thunderous as well. What do I want in the back, though? Um, hmm. Cortana feels good, but then we're, we're, we're way weaker against, like, Celesteela Entai. Whereas Tapafina gives us a little bit more stability there. And maybe Cortana is our last one, you know. I'd like Incineroar just for the Intimidate against the Garchomp. But we can't fit everything in. We cannot fit everything in, can we? So there's going to be a lot of reliance here, I think, on the Thunderous for us. Because it helps us deal with a bunch of things, you know. Uh, the Celesteela. Which is a big one, jumping out at me straight away, of course. Right. Let's see what we got. Grimmsnarl Entai. So unless... Unless we see Fake Out from the Grimmsnarl. Mm, we maybe see Scary Face as well. That could be a definite option for my opponent. Or Thunder Wave. I think what we'll do, we'll just play a little bit safer here. We'll bring in Tapu Fini. Did we go? No, I think we just protect this turn. I think just, let's just protect. Let's just play it a little bit safer here. Just play it a bit on the back foot. See what my opponent's going to try and do here. We might be giving them free screens, but it's not free. I mean, that we're going to get them up anyway. They would just be tied up this turn, setting the screens up rather than uh, a turn where we can maybe get an attack off unscathed. But I would rather play it a little bit cautiously here rather than just jump in. Yeah, Thunder Wave, okay. Yeah, and well worse. All right. Well, well, well. I mean, we're in a nice situation now where we can calm mind. I don't think my opponent can go for a Snarl. Freely, not with Thunderous out on the field anyway. Um, could we bring in... See, I want to bring Nihiligo onto the field. I really do. Uh, I think we could probably bring Nihiligo on in. It's just whether or not my opponent kind of predicts this. And go Sacred Fire. Which will do some hefty damage, you know. So there's a light screen. Are they snarling? Because that would be bad. No, they're will o -Wispin. That's fine. That's great. Okay. Now we're in a good position. <laughs> Where well, we can go Meteor Beam. Meteor Beam. We don't need to worry about the Thunder Wave anymore. So a scary face would have been a better option. Um, and then we just, yeah, I think just Muddy Water. We could potentially just go after the Grim Snarl here as well. I think we Muddy Water. Do we max? Nah, we Meteor Beam. Meteor Beam. We'll go after the Entai. Entai. Okay, what's coming in? Come on, be the Celestina, please. <laughs> We like to see it. We love to see it. There we go. Thunder Wave. Not going to do anything. That terrain protecting us beautifully here. Yeah. Love to see it. This is going to smack this Celesteela so hard. It's going to smack so hard. <laughs> I'd love to see a drop as well this turn. That would be perfect. I don't know if it'll be enough. It will do a heck of a lot of damage. 75%. Oh, not even that. Not even that. I'm getting excited over nothing. That Celesteela is... Just come in. I guess the light screen definitely helps, you know. Getting way over, way over excited about nothing. Get the accuracy drop, which is nice. Um, we have got the attack boost. But we're not in a great spot now, are we? Where, you know, you really want Thunderous to come in. Uh, and then we can pressure the Celestia a bit, a bit better. I think we'll Muddy Water. And I think we'll switch into Thunderous here. Because the Entai is off the field. That Will-O-Wisp threat's gone. They can't Thunder Wave us with the Grim Snarl. They can set the Reflective if they like. But I think this turn you probably want to go after the Nihiligo with that attack boost. Arr, okay. No Comfy coming in. Comfy. Comfy. Celesteela Maxin. Okay. 
The problem would be if we see uh, uh, what we're gonna see. What we're gonna see. What what's the Celesteel gonna do? It's gonna go Max Steel Spike, isn't it? Might go into the Finny, but you would think with the attack boost that we've had onto the uh, the uh, the um, Nihiligo, it's probably likely to go after that slot. So there's muddy water, some nice chip, accuracy drop on the Comfy, which is always useful, and max overgrowth. Not what we want to see. Should take it. Ooh, yeah, we take that like a champ. Yeah, that's is that special then? I didn't know that. What what attack? I thought we got power. I'm not even sure. Does it get Giga Drain? I'm sure, I got Power Whip. I'm not too sure. Um. Anyway, <coughs> uh, Thunder is in a great spot now to max and just nuke this Celesteela. The problem is, of course. Um, no, we'll go for this. We'll go for this because they can go for. Yeah, we'll just do it. Max Lightning. Uh, they can go for Floral Healing, of course, which would give them a bit of health back. But I think the combination between Max Lightning and Muddy Water will be fine. And with Celesteela being a flying type, you don't need to worry so much about the terrain, even though we're changing it now. I mean, the Comfy can go for a Giga Drain here. And it's going to do a lot of damage. I'll get the terrain boost, but not the Celesteela. Not Steela. Floral Healing coming out. Yep. Let's see how much health you get back. Ooh, it's quite a chunk, isn't it? It is quite a chunk, really. But how much is this going to do? No reflector. We're life orbed. Hmm. It's going to be very close with muddy water here, you know. Probably not so close, but it makes us. It puts us in a spot where next turn we're going to be able to get it, regardless of what happens, you know. Yeah, not quite enough. Another accuracy drop onto the stealer. Always useful. Steel spike coming out. Yeah, not going to quite be enough, I don't think, to kind of help help out my opponent so much. Now we could go for another. I can't mind this next turn. I feel like we've probably got room to do it. But you got to worry about Trick Room coming out from the Comfy as well, you know. And the Celesteela going for Max Guard. That would be my biggest worry, I think. I think because of that, I think I'm going to double into. Um, we're gonna double in on the comfy because I think I think that's the best kind of route out of this for for oh draining kiss mm, okay well a moon blast isn't gonna be enough to get the uh, Celesteela. and probably this combination might not be either wow the light screen really helping my opponent out in this situation here and you know comfy taking that like a champ actually. But it is enough to get it. So that, that definitely helps us. But the Celestial are going to get like at least one more attack off. It was that Max Steel Spike the last turn, you know. That's really what did it for my opponent. Um, that defense boost. So you'd maybe want to go for another Max Steel Spike there rather than the Max Overgrowth. But I mean the damage onto the Finney is quite useful as well. Comfy always, Comfy always surprises me. You know, it's always one of those Pokemon you think by looking at it, it looks like it's so frail, but it's it's pretty. It surprises you defensively what it's capable of. You know, Grimstall coming back onto the field, Celesteela going to end up no max, no more, but we'll be able to get it this turn. Um, we can just Moonblast into Grimstall, uh, Max Lightning. I don't think there's any. There's no need for like speed control at this point in time. But we do need to potentially worry about getting Finny off the field to come back in again to protect us against the Will-O-Wisps and stuff like that, especially on Tanai Legal. Yeah, so that's enough to get Celesteela. And the Moonblast should do a nice chunk, like 50, 50% 50 to Grimmsnarl, you'd say, like 45, 50%. Well, I don't know, maybe, might be less. My, uh, my guesses haven't been that great this game so far. Got excited about the Nihiligo. Thought Thunderous would do more to Comfy, but we're about right there. We're a little bit under undervalue in the Moon Blast there, but that's good. So Grimstall in a position to go down the next turn, uh, even with the light screen up. And then we just got inside to then worry about which, you know, between Nihiligo and um, uh, Cortana, we will be able to handle no problem at all. Okay, well, 
just go for that Moonblast. And I think we just go for Wild Charge, to be honest. Wild Charge, Moonblast. It's going to be enough. Thunder Wave coming out. It's going to be able to get it onto the Finny, which is fine. I mean, the, the only thing that the Entai can do now is Snarl. But if you Snarl, then you give Thunderous an attack boost, which you don't kind of really want to do. So you're better off, like, will o wisp -ing. But then if you will o wisp hoping now for the the, the fully, para fully paralyzed Tapu Finny here. But we get the Moon Blast, and it will be enough to get the Grim Snarl, and then... Nihiligo can come in, and this makes this per this is a perfect. <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> makes it a perfect episode for Nihiligo here to come in and close this game up for us. Um, we'll probably need Finny as well, but then we do have Cortana in the back that we can kind of rely on a little bit as well. So the, the set of Nihiligo as well. Uh, you do see some sets with Trick Room. Uh, but I kind of opted more for uh, just, you know, we've got the, the Meteor Beam to take advantage of the Power Herb. And then when we don't have it, we've got Power Gem that we can utilize as well, which makes it just a bit more flexible. And you're not tied to not being able to, to attack uh, when you're <clears throat> after you've used that move once, once or twice. So it's not coming out. But again, it's not really going to be enough to, to allow Entai to kind of get back into this game, even if we're fully paralyzed here, which we're not. Muddy water hitting and uh, that calm mind at the very start of the game for Tapu Fini coming in really really important for us here uh, and Tapu Fini probably the MVP of the team I'd say I would always lean towards Nihiligo but you can't uh, deny that Tapu Fini did an amazing job there very good game to my opponent and uh, a nice win for us to wrap up today's episode so I'll hop over now and get you all that rental team for today's team okay friends here is the rental for today's team it is consisting and built all around that Nihiligo which we've seen a lot of today you know it's done really well so i hope you've enjoyed today's episode if you try the team out definitely let me know down in the comment section below i'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences with nylego and this build in particular i think it's a really nice build and it has a lot of flexibility in it we didn't get to see a lot of the the whole team you know we didn't really get to see the cartana too much today which is a little unfortunate cartana great pokemon in its own right um but the rest of the team kind of showed up and did some nice work for us when called upon. So, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Uh, take care of yourselves, and we'll be back very soon with another episode and a brand new team to feature here on the channel. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.